Hello Cobra Lords and welcome to my look at the new DLC of Breaking Ground by Squad, no it's a take two, yes that's it. You get a lot of new things, you get things to discover, uh, surface features, you get science equipment for your Kerbals to go more science, you get cool suits for your Kerbals to do science in, and probably what most people are looking forward to, the robotics, yes that's included now in this DLC. But first off, let's look at the science stuff you get. Okay, you get extra surface features. You get extra features which are on Duna, Tylo, Val, and Kerbin, and probably some of the other planets and all sorts of stuff that you can look for. It gives you extra reasons to go out and do science and do more exploring. You can't detect these with a normally scanner or anything like that, so you have to go out and look for them. However, you do get a lot more science from them, and you get things like these science arms, the rover arms, to have a look at them. And also you get science equipment, so let's send a mission off to, I don't know, I think Tylo, there's one rock that I particularly want to have a look at. So, arriving at Tylo with a bit of cheating, oh yes, obviously, because time's limited when you're doing YouTube videos. So, with the new equipment the Kerbals can deploy on the planet, you have containers, and you just see me eject them on the side of this vessel. So, let's get a Kerbal out, you have an inventory slot for your Kerbal, and here appears you still can't remove the Kerbal's helmet when you're out in space, which is a shame, it would be awesome to watch the heads explode. Anyway, back to science. Well, in the container equipment, you have to pack what you need when you're in the vehicle assembly building, but basically you can transfer it to Kerbal, he can dump it on the surface, and then you can do some science. So first off, you need a power device. You can either use a solar panel type or the nuclear thermal generator, which will make your Kerbal's glow. The science equipment you get is weather station, the goo, the communication system, um, where else most is size monitor, which will make measure uh, earthquakes. You also get a control unit, which I think you really need. I haven't tried this out yet in Korea mode or in science mode, but this DLC will add missions to your career mode game or your science mode game. But do bear in mind you have to start a brand new career game, I believe, to get all these extra features on the surface. Like this rock we're heading towards now. I think this is my favourite one as well, though I haven't found any of the geysers which are on Val, I believe, or the crystals that I have seen in screenshots which are on Kerbin. Not sure what they are, but they do look interesting. Right, let's have a look at the spacesuits since we missed out on them on the first mission. Right, three Kerbals. These, this is the orange ones. I believe there's a blue version as well. You can see it lights up like the Tron suits. The only thing that's missing is the little disc on the back of the Kerbals. That would be awesome if they had a little disc and they could just throw it. But now let's have a look at the robotics. This is the very first thing I've built and I'm controlling this through action groups. You can use the controller system which I'll have a look at in a moment. But with the action group setup you can set up the limits or you know one extreme limit to the other extreme limit and press the action group and it will flip between one or the other. And yeah this is my fire truck. Bearing in mind Kerbal's idea of fire truck does involve a fire. But anyway, let's uh, nip off to the VAB and have a look at what else you can do. Okay, you have the track editor, the Cal 1000 controller, which will control like an animation, I suppose. If you're into animation or if you've worked with animation before, you know how this stuff works. You can set a sort of like a time limit on this editor, you can set keyframes, and then you can adjust the control of certain parts of your vessel. Now I'm trying to make a sort of like a turtle thing so to crawl across the ground. So I have to set up the keyframes to control the servos that you've got here and the hinges so that they sort of like go on in time. And you can test this out in the vehicle assembly building. So you don't have to try to edit this and then go out into the real world, which is cool. That means you don't have to quickly load your craft and then keep on going back between the vehicle assembly building and that to keep on testing your vehicle out. The only thing I wish they did with this is when you select a part to be edited and controlled is that perhaps you can have the part be selected and you can move it physically in the editor in well in the vehicle assembly building but as you can see it works I've put the program in a loop and it keeps on crawling across the ground like a turtle awesome 
I know, it's, it's terrible. But let's see if we can swim. Okay, it doesn't. But that might be because the girders aren't a physical part. So let's add some wings and... Yes, it works! You can make a rowboat with this thing, <laughs> that'll be awesome. Uh, let's do this in physical time accelerate. It does not like it. Okay, so that's with the servos and the hinges. There is a rotor in this game, which adds some possibilities. Let's see if this will be better at rowing. This means that I can speed these up without doing time acceleration. And hopefully we get a bit of speed up. And if you wonder about propellers, we'll get to that at the end of the video. Okay, let's go full speed. <laughs> okay, so... So yes, you do have to bear in mind that the faster you go, the more things will probably break. Especially water, I've never had very good success with water vehicles. And look at some of the cool things you can build. You can build space jellyfish, perhaps even space whales. Okay, this is not what I was looking forward to doing on this. This is what I was planning on doing, a capture system. Say like you have got a spacecraft with no docking port. Uh, yeah, the spacecraft I'm catching has got a docking port, but this is just for testing purposes. Okay, so we come in slowly, closing the arm, and yes, it's gripped it. It's holding it pretty steady, which is pretty good. You can imagine this, but our bigger version of it, going up to an asteroid with the advanced grabbing unit on each arm and it can attach itself to the asteroid. It'll be a lot more stable and you'll have much more control over it when you're trying to get it in orbit or close to an orbit around Kerbin. Anyway, let's look at this ring station with the rotor on it. Let's see if we can rotate it. And no, the rotation doesn't work when you go into time accelerate, which is a bit of a shame, but it's okay because you don't actually need it when you're in time acceleration. Though what I have found with this rotation, space rotation system is that with every action there's an opposite re reaction. Now the space, opposite end of the space station is full of fuel so it's quite heavy, but still it's rotating so you need some kind of counter rotation system. So I'd like to see what people come up with that. And yes, if you spin your space station up to 100,000 RPM, it will destroy itself. So do watch out for that. It'll also get your Kerbals to bring up the snacks that they've already have and cause a mess on your space stations. However, your Kerbals normally are happy after the extreme ride that you've given them. One of the parts I haven't covered yet is the pistons, and these are awesome things, which I think you can do a lot with. And look at this, you can do a quick bounce, and that's, that's quite high bounce that was. But I'm imagining some kind of hop system, perhaps on a low gravity moon or something. You can make some kind of walking, or you can just use them as landing legs, or perhaps you can build a digger with them, I don't know, sky's the limit. Talking about skies, yes, you can use them to build rotors. No longer will you have to do a stock rotor system if you have this DLC. So, yes, this is not intended for this use, and I think there are some problems. It's not highly efficient because you need a lot of electricity to use these. This has been my quick look at Kerbal Space Program Breaking Ground DLC, and it has quite a lot of potential. So, go do more science and more engineering.